the Frozen Sonic Mini 8KS. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, the market is buzzing right now with new resin printers and Frozen has chosen to give us something old but renewed. I was a big fan of the Mini 8K and I raved about its incredible 22 micron printing power. For me, it was phenomenally good, but unfortunately it came back then with a price tag of $600. It's considerably less now, but it's still not the most affordable printer out there. In an effort to make the unit more affordable, Frozen has redeveloped the Mini 8K into a less costly version, the Mini 8K S. To make the difference obvious, we have a greeny yellow lid, and other than that, at a glance, it's hard to tell them apart. But there are a few differences. The USB port has moved from the front to the less convenient side. The power point and the switch are still at the rear. The fan and vents seem to have disappeared, relocating presumably to the bottom, but everything works and is pleasantly quiet in use. The big change comes in the drive gear, where the dual linear rail has been replaced by a single rail though this seems reassuringly wide, and the whole structure seems solid, so quality hasn't been skimped on here. Sure enough, the Xeon moves freely and smoothly without a hint of shudder or wobble. I always enjoy how chunky and well-engineered Frozen's build plates are, and this is no exception. The face is etched with a very strong gripping pattern, and holds the prints like stink. The resin tray is still sturdy metal construction. It's held in place with the same easy to drop removable bolts, and it has a nice clear max level indicator. Below this lives the wonderful 8K LCD screen, capable of delivering 22 microns of XY resolution that set the original Mini 8K apart from the competition. And wonderful it is, as, up till this point, Frozen have been the only ones capable of giving us less than 29 microns. Though this is going to change in just a couple of days from now, thanks to Anycubic's 19 micron 12K Photon Mono M5S. And Eligu tell me that they have a 12K printer coming out in just a few weeks. So could this be that Frozen is falling behind? But those two printers are very much mid-range, with larger build plates. The beauty of the Mini 8K S is that it's squarely aimed at the newcomer end of the market, with smaller needs in mind. The menu screen is the same size, with the same easy navigation user interface. And it still helps guide you through plate levelling, which is a nice touch. Another difference between the Minis is an overall loss of print height, though this is just 10mm and all the other dimensions remain the same. And somehow, through these seemingly minor alterations, Frozen has managed to reduce the weight to just 10kg. So how does it print? My two favourite resins are Frozen's Aqua 4K and Anycubic's Craftsman DLP. I find both these give consistently high results. Unfortunately, all I have to hand is Anycubic's Craftsman Grey, so sorry Frozen. The 8KS is open to most slicers, and these are the settings that I came up with. As always, I started with the Amerilabs Town test print, with no anti-aliasing, and as you'd expect, the details are astonishing. Yes, the layer lines seem vivid, but this is a powerful macro lens. Remember, this is just a 16mm tall print, and those layer lines are just 1 20th of a millimetre apart, so good luck seeing those with the naked eye. The open source ring looked great too.
This 45mm miniature comes courtesy of our buddies at Archvillain Games. He needs some cleanup, but for something so small, the detail is clear. Testing anti-aliasing at the halfway point, I printed Mini Vogman. For something more demanding, again Archvillain Games came to the rescue. It looks stunning. It's hard not to marvel at the level of detail we can see here. So, what do I think of the Frozen Mini 8KS? Well, in honesty, I'm disappointed. The power socket on my printer is loose and won't stay turned on unless I place the connection under tension, which is what I've done here with the aid of these cable ties. Now, I didn't buy this unit, it was given to me freely for review purposes, but if I had, I'd be looking for a repair or a replacement. Now, if we look at my free user comparison data, which I admit needs much, much more data to be truly accurate, we can see that real users tell us that 11% of frozen printers arrive broken. And that's not too bad when we compare it with others. And that's probably why 93% of frozen customers would recommend buying frozen. But this broken PowerPoint isn't why I'm disappointed. This is a fast moving industry and improvement is the name of the game. I was hoping for a DLP printer from Frozen or maybe seeing them shrink a 12K to truly phenomenal print depths. Instead, Frozen has stood still. Rehashing an 18 month old product, they've allowed others to catch up and maybe overtake. Where's the market changing innovation? Frankly, you won't find it here. But does that mean that the Mini 8KS is no good? Far from it. A year and a half ago, the Mini 8K was way ahead of the competition. And for its print volume, it's still the closest thing we have to narrow in on DLP performance. Yes, the 8KS has one less linear rail, but I'm not seeing any performance changes. It's every bit as good as its older brother. Frankly, Frozen seem to have shot themselves in the foot here. They've proved that they can produce something just as good for less money. Given this, I can't see why now anyone would want to pay out the $100 difference to buy the 8K. At $350, the Mini 8KS is still at the high price end of this section of the market, which is seeing printers become cheaper and cheaper. With $200 printers from Eligu and Anycubic, the Mini 8KS is a staggering 75% more expensive. So is it worth it? Well, yes and no. Without a doubt, the Mini 8KS will give you better quality prints than its cheaper rivals. And if you have a powerful macro lens like mine, you'll be able to see that difference. However, in the hand, it might not be so easy to see. Now, many newcomers to resin printing are ultimately put off by the mess, the smells, and let's not kid ourselves here, the dangers. With such people, I invariably encourage them not to spend too much money on their first printer because the hobby isn't for everyone. So should I tell these folks to spend almost double to achieve a print that looks virtually the same in the hand? Comfortably, I can't. However, if like me you absolutely love fine detail, or if this is your second or third printer and you want to see improved performance, or even if you were originally considering buying the Mini 8K, then I wouldn't hesitate to say, yes, buy it. This is an excellent printer and it's worth the difference in the money. And I'm pleased to say I might be able to help there a little. If you check the description below this video, you'll find a limited time offer for 10% off, exclusive to this channel. And that's it for this review, guys. It really seems a manic time for printing companies right now, 
then I have a few more printers that I'm reviewing at the moment. So look out for those very soon. In the meantime guys, take care and thanks for watching.